it's kind of interesting that you said that because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with uh, just quickly on some of the playing habits, right? Yeah, yeah. So, for example, one of the bad habits is um, if you don't if you don't hit on. We were we were watching a game the other day with a scout, right? Yeah. I think that's a little bit of perspective on some stuff. Yep. It was interesting to hear their point of view. It was little things, as we always talk about, they see things that other people don't see. So, for example, he's looking at one D that he wanted to like or he's trying to like. And he said out loud, he goes, just, I, I wouldn't mind if he just got involved just a little bit. Just physically. Give yeah. someone a stick. And if yeah. someone says, like, why did you do that? And he says, because I felt like it. Right. You know, to have a little bit of a jam. So he noticed that. He noticed, uh, you know, there was one guy that got a, a guy somewhat of a, a point getter, I guess, that got the puck in the, in the honey hole. And dusted it off, then shot. And I said at first, I said, "Guy, you got to get that off your stick." And he said, "Yeah, you got. To, you don't have time at the next level." And then there was, uh, I don't know if there's anything else that sticks out. But anyways, for me, those are the things I noticed. And then I noticed one of the players that just have an exceptional game, smaller guy, won every battle, and and you know he was noticing that too. He goes, "It's hard not to like, really hard not to like." Um, having said all that, that was the first time I've been to a. Uh, a youth hockey game in two years because of the COVID, right? To actually watch a live game, uh, enjoyable. But um, what I notice is a lot of the bad habits. And one was not getting the shots off quick. So, like guys, when you you don't have time, so like those are that's that's a habit, right? You get a puck, you got to get it off. You got to make the plays early. Uh, D play D. Like what a lot of the times is people try to do something that they're not because they think it's going to impress other people. Like, like scouts and stuff, and it's not actually to your benefit to be something that's not, like if you're a D, play D. If you're, if you're a goal scorer, make sure you're getting your shots. Uh, bad habit is the mouthy guys, the guys that never shut up. Um, that, that's a body language issue. It's just, it's bad. You got you to gotta rein that in. Uh, finishing checks, a lot of guys don't just don't do it. It's a bad habit. And when, when if you're not finishing checks, checks, typically what you're doing is you're doing Circles, right? You're figure skating. Yep. And you can take yourself out of the play. And uh, doing too much. Um, and then not like when you see plays, make them. Those are habits that, that are that are uh, they're not benefiting you. And to me, the biggest one that stands out, bad habit as far as playing goes, because we can talk about lots of details, yeah, yeah. but just in, in general, is the, your attention to detail in the D zone. That's why I say everyone should play lacrosse. Every hockey player should play lacrosse. Or basketball, I believe, is the same. You have to play hard D. And I just find in hockey, a lot of the kids' attitudes are, I want to score goals. Bad, that's a good habit, that you want to score goals. A bad habit is you don't care as much in your D zone. Bad habit. Yep. And an example that I'm going to use is two summers ago when Eric Wellwood, who coached at the time the Flint Firebirds, who had a really good team. So not only was he out here training with me, training guys with me, and, and teaching them how to be hockey players. But if you stud out, he would, and, and, you're, and the scouting staff liked him, he can vouch that, yeah, this kid can play. So there's a particular kid on the team who actually get, got drafted, and uh, he's a very good player. But we were doing de- defensive zone drill, and he, this guy tuned right out, and it was his effort was less than 50% for sure. So I said at first, I said to the, to the, the use his name, I said, hey, you need to pick this up. I mean, you got to get understand your D zone. Like the the more that you do your D zone, the better hockey player you're going to be. In much longer term, and a couple of foul words, and then a couple a couple more uh, sets later, or drills later, doing the same drill sets. Eric Lawson obviously said, "If you're not going to try, get off the ice." He goes, "If you play like that at the next level, you, you won't even get one shift." And the kid pouted. And didn't want to do the drill. And like he, he still was out there, but he was like, he went from maybe doing it 30% to maybe 50%. Yeah. And the agent called, hey, how's he doing? And Eric told him flat out, he was never play a game in our league. He, he doesn't have the attitude. Like it's, it, it was an attitude, but it was attention to detail, like bad habit. Learn how to play the D zone and do the little things as hard as you can. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, anything from you? Yeah. I like how you you were pointing out this ended up being a kid who got drafted because this is what happens is kids that start to get good in minor hockey, yeah, they they can get away with or they think they can get away with these types of on ice behaviors. So 
if you're an offensive player, like this is another one I was the game I was watching last night, one of the one of the better players, he's always looking for the chip and go in the yep. D zone, right? The easy one. And it's like it's you're not gonna get it, man. You're not gonna get it. Stop your feet. Yep. Stop your feet in the D Stop zone. Your feet. And stuff like hanging on to the puck too long or not making the pass that you should make because you think you'll do better if you keep the yep. puck, which could be true. You know, if you're on a, on an average team and let's say you don't trust your defenseman to make a good play, you might think, well, I'm just going to hang on to it and make my play because me having the puck is better than him having the puck. Even if you're right, it's the wrong play. So now you're just practicing bad habits because yep. like you said, at the next level, you can't do that. And that's what happens. You run out of time and space as you get into the higher level. So if you're a good player, you need to be aware of, we always talk about like playing the game properly. Yep. And this is something that actually Justin always says to me when we're talking about players, he'll say, yeah, like he doesn't really play the right way, but he's good for his, on his team or he's yep. good in that game or yep. whatever. And when we talk about playing the right way, it's play as if you were going to be playing at the next level. So if you go into a game and think, if I was playing called up a year right now, well, how would I play? What would I do if that was the case? And that might help to center you to make some better decisions yeah. with things that you might think you can get away with. Yeah. Because the guys, they notice, man. The, the, the scouts, they notice whether you do things the right way or the wrong way. You know? And when we sit do. there, like you said, we, we sit at that game. You can, you can watch these kids and what they're doing. And you hear the scouts say the same thing we, we think when we're watching whichever kid they're keying in on that game. You know, They say the same thing. It's like you can't dust the puck off. You don't have time. Or why aren't you moving your feet to the middle when – but you can get away with it because you're just a better player right now, you know? But when you get Yeah, to you're a better player, and that kid got a shot off. It didn't go in, but your goalies aren't necessarily... That's it too, right? Taught. They're good goalies for minor midget. Yeah. They're the best that you can get in the area, apparently. Yeah. So there, there's, a, there's a certain quality, but they're not the best goalies that you're ever going to shoot against. Yeah. So if you, if you take that, you know, I can't even tell you how many times with... In, the same people like that can get it, but they choose not to really focus, you know, getting the puck way too outside, dusting it off, pulling it back, all these different little shooting cues for a goalie and defense to read, they read them. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you dust the puck off, it gives that extra second split second for a goalie defenseman, everyone to just and block shots and get in the way. Yeah. Whereas if you understand to get it on your stick, so you got to practice it. That's right. It yeah. doesn't have to be the, like a beautiful shot. It can, sometimes it comes off off balance, but they go in. Yeah, you know, or or uh, and and it was really nice. Remember the kid that sent us a video the other day. So he was at the shooting camp, and he he yeah. got that beautiful goal out of exactly releasing a puck uh, in in the honey hole. How we were practicing for basically a day and a half. That's pro. That's a pro move. To, yeah, and he yeah. sent it to us. He goes like, I I, I did it. And I go, yeah, you did it because you 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 did some practice. Yeah. And it was perfect. Awesome. It was awesome, bud. Yeah, that's yeah. it. And and the way you phrase it, I really love this. You're, you're This is coined for you. You've coined this, is the take the minor hockey out of it. Mm -hmm. That is basically the key. Yeah. If you're going to take one takeaway for your on-ice habits in terms of your playing style, yeah. it's take the minor hockey out of it. Yeah. If you got called up to play a junior B game or play a year up or play at yeah. whatever level, would you be able to do that? Yeah. That's the question to ask yourself. And if you're a defenseman and you're going to try to take it end-to-end, -end, you probably can't really do that at the next level. Or you look your buddy off over here because you see a lane this way. Yeah. It's like you probably aren't going to get away with that if you played up or if you played the next level or whatever. It's not going to work. So you got to keep that you got to keep that in mind when you're when you're playing cuz yeah. those habits will start to creep in. Yeah. And, from, and, and and just a, a, a side note is is effort, right? Effort even when you don't feel like it like it's a bad idea. It's a not it's a not a good habit because your habits do take over when you're tired, when you're you, when you don't feel like it, like that's when they, your bad habits get exposed even more. Yep. So that's why you, you, you know, you have that checklist of what you do well, but then it's those little things like, are you for checking at your absolute hardest? Are you taking, are you finishing your checks when you, when age appropriate? Are you, fin I'm not saying kill people, but are you getting some contact? Because you have to have some contact out there. Are you getting rid of the puck quickly? Are you use distributing the puck properly? Like, I remember it used to frustrate me a little bit. Not really. But when I was in youth hockey, I'd always like, that's the play to make. Okay, here's a two-on-one. He's open. I give it to him. I go to the net. Many times the guy, the kid wasn't talented enough to score or maybe even fumble the puck. And you'd be like, ah, come on, man. But you know what? You go do it again. And you do it again. And you do it again. And you do it again. You do the right thing over and over. You back check hard even though it's a 10-1 game. 
either way, winning or losing. You do that. It's, it's a bad habit not to do that because that, that creeps in. And once the once it starts seeping in, it starts taking over. Yeah. So you want to make it, you're checking in on those good habits. 